Tonight we are going to talk a little bit about karma. Karma, sometimes we talk, you know, people, and not one of my friends, he likes to say, well, when bad things happen, there's a karma boy. We was talking about how the rain falling and if people would have to go through slush when they park in the savannah, come in here. Well, we're going to do, boy, probably the karma had to walk through slush. Tonight, permit me to give you an example of how karma works using Lord Shiva. Tonight, Lord Shiva is the actor. At one point, I was thinking about using this story as the play. But I don't think we'd do it justice, so I wanted to read it. You know how you always hear Sati Mata dies, Lord Shiva, his first, the first wife. She dies. She goes to, we know the story. She goes to her father's house. He, he somehow insults the husband. And she gets so worked up, so angry. She says mantras and she burns herself alive. That is a lot of summarizing, first of all. There are some details there. Things happen there. And that is one of the parts that we want to play tonight. What happens after she burns her body? And in reading it, you are going to hear and see and understand the law of karma using Lord Shiva as the example. And it will explain some of the things about Lord Shiva. Remember, this yagna is being done to edify you about your Lord Shiva. So sometimes when children see on Facebook and these pitiers that are circulating, you are hearing the singer singing, um, Akshamala, Bhanamala, Munda, Mala, Dari. The Munda Mala, as I said before, is the Mala with the skulls and the bones. There's a discourse. Parvati Mata says, I heard those skulls and those bones around your neck. That's another woman's bone. Which woman is that? And he says, Gil, that your bones from a previous birth. It's yourself, don't worry. Tonight you'll hear about where that Mala came from and why he did it. And why he put the ashes on his body. In the first night when I was talking about the agoric worship that some Shiv devotees follow. There was a question somebody asked me about something they saw on CNN. You know, you think um, if I see it on CNN, it's factual. It is, just, it is factual. There is a clan, a class of worship that these people do totally different to you and I. We'll touch on it tonight to understand why. For this portion of the discourse, I enter into Brahm Vaivat Puran, where Sri Hari Vishnu is giving the discourse about Lord Shiva and his pastimes. And the question is asked, Mahavishnu, may you please tell us, please tell us what happened to Lord Shiva after Satimata destroy that body. We know that they destroyed the Yagna. He sent all his soldiers out of that moment of hurt and pain. And in that moment, he tells to Virabhadra, to Bhairu Bhava, all of them, go and destroy that Yagna. That Yagna has no good in it. If they can cause her harm, and she's the mother of the universe, do not leave any person, you know, free of lash. If Lord Vishnu himself stands with Daksh, her father, my father-in-law, damage him too. Anybody that stands for unrighteousness in that type of prayer, bring destruction there. And they go and they really cause destruction. But the Shishya here is asking, what about him? What? did he do and Lord Vishnu says what he does was when everything was settled when they had revived his father-in-law Daksh the son of Brahma they had given him because of his false pride they had now given him a head of a goat if you ever see pictures where there's a sheep head or goat headed person standing over Lord Vishnu when all of them are around him it is a popular picture this is the individual. Mahadev Baba goes closer and closer 
where the body of Sati is lying lifeless. This is where we enter our discourse. Let's hear what happens when Lord Shiva starts to speak to that corpse that is lying close to the Hawan Kun in this Yagya. Tonight you hear a different discourse. Imagine a lady in white clothing lying lifeless on the ground. Lord Shiva now walks up and he says, Devi, I am your Shiva, I am your Swami. Since when do you lie down and do not move when I come close to you? Devi, get up. Get up, Sati Devi, get up. I possess all forms of wealth here, all forms of riches. I give success to those that are downtrodden. But without you, my body is as if it is dead. Without your presence in my life, it is better I lie next to you lifeless. Wherever I am without you, O oh Shakti, I cannot do anything. I am lifeless. What use? What use is one half of a whole. Without you, I am incomplete. Let's hear what he says. He says, Mother, Brahma, Vishnu, myself, we all worship you. Mother, why are you leaving me now? Mother, what did I do that you are disowning me? Remember the night when we were talking about how he didn't share the prasad? And she gets vexed with him. She's always punishing him. In this husband and wife, oh Lord, he's always the example of the husband. And he has to know how to coax his wife. How to ask for forgiveness. There are many examples of this. He always gets himself in trouble. Tonight we will hear about another instance. He says, what did I do? Mother, why are you leaving me? Don't separate yourself. How and why are you annoyed with me? Look today and he's touching her lips. Lord Vishnu says that lifeless body is on the ground and he's playing with her lips and he says, why are these lips not talking to me? Why are you not complaining about something I did? Mother, open your eyes and look at me at least. Dear Devi, don't lie there. You are the mother of all the Vedas. What did I do? Mother, and with that, what does he do? He scoops up in his arms. And this very fear, Gauri means very fear, very beautiful woman. He's, he's, his hair is loose. The water is dripping around that matted locks. But Devi in her white, if you ever see her in white sari, Rudrax and Parijat flower in her hair. This is the moment infested with the separation of Sati. Let's hear what Lord Shiva does. He scoops up that body and he smells her hair still filled with the flowers. He kisses that wife all over her body and he starts to bellow. He starts to bawl. Lord Vishnu says when a calf is looking for the other of the mother and she's calling and she's calling in a like manner. He started a ball for her. Why are you Devi? How is it possible that Shiva and Shakti can be separated? What type of Maya, what type of illusion is this? And he says, I'm going to find you. You are playing hide and seek with me. I will find you. And he starts to go from one place to another hole in that mother in his hands. And he's crying, he's crying and he's bowling. All the devotees become uneasy because of the sound. This horrible song that is emanated from his body, from his mouth. Tears that are flowing from his eyes go to form lakes upon the earth. Nature, Sara and other places of Tira that still exist today. When people go in those lakes that have salt water and they take a dip, they take a bath. The sins of these type of people disappear. Different type of Tira is formed. They go and they beg Lord Vishnu. Prabhu. Please intervene. If he continues on this path, destruction is going to come. We need to get rid of that body that he's holding on to. We need to move that body, otherwise he will remain locked in grief. Lord Vishnu, please help us now. Let's hear what Lord Vishnu does. It was one year since the Yagna and Lord Shiva has been roaming wild and he's not stopping, he's no longer interested in the runnings of the universe. 
no longer doing tapasya, no longer doing dhyan. He's only calling Sati, 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 and he's looking for Lord Vishnu at a distance, mounts an arrow on his bow, and he lets loose that arrow, aiming at the body of Sati Mata. And the body with that arrow, it bursts into pieces, burning pieces. Wherever those pieces fell in today's world, Siddha Peet or the different Peet where people burn the bodies. When you go to India and you see people burning in Varnasi, in Kashi, in the different locations where cremations are done. The reason they are done there is because parts of Sati Mata burning body fell there. And for that reason, people continue to do um, cremation and funeral rites in those spots. It is because of that it was done. The little piece of a chest that remained, Mahadeva Baba sat down and he burned that remaining portion. And from that piece of fire, hear what he does. He fishes out from the fire the bones that he makes the mala with. As it was burning, he put his hands into the hot amber and would get a bones and he started to string it around his neck. Hence, he is called the one who wears the bones mala, munda mala. He took the ashes of Sati and he says, you are no longer with me but I decorate my body with you. And he pasted his body with her ash. From that day onward, the person who offers ashes, how one ashes, Basma, the Mario, you have hair loss problem, scalp problem, when you have psoriasis, any type of skin related problem, these things are going to go. In addition to, Lord Shiva is very happy that the person that takes the Basma and makes Tilak, the Tripundra, Tilak upon his lingam, that person is always going to be best with peace and happiness in their marriage. When all this was going on, he's going, he's crying, he's rolling on the ground like a helpless person. Lord Vishnu thought it was safe, listen to the word safe, to come close to him now. In this unconscious state, Lord Vishnu comes close to him. Let's hear what happened. What does he do? Lord Vishnu comes with his four hands. He's wearing that yellow dhoti and he feels sorry for what? He says, look at my friend today. Look at how my friend has come. And he sits down, see it in your mind. Sits down and he lifts very carefully, very gently with his four hands, the body of Shiv Baba. And he puts Lakshmi Pati now, puts him on his lap and caresses, rubs the head of Lord Shiva rubbing him and begging him to come back into consciousness. Wake up, God. Wake up, Mahadeva Baba. Jagat Guru, wake up. Do not remain like this. How could I see you like this? Regain your senses. You are the power of each Jeev. How can you be like this? Lord Shiva begs him. Masawa is him, Lachmi, and all Dharma, Yamraj, all of them come. And they start to rub the Lord as he's unconscious and they are trying to bring him back. Oh Shambhu, bad times come to those. They face pain, they face grief, they have fear. And when that bad time pass, good times come again. During that good time, fortune will come and fortune will go. This is why learned people says, happiness is like a dream. Good times are like a dream. And this is why, O Shambhu, don't you always practice being neutral? Not too happy, not too sad, nothing is permanent. Why are you like this? You will meet your Sati again. You will have your Devi. What are you worried about, O Shiva? Could the coolness of the water ever leave the water? Could the burning effect ever leave the fire? How could Sati leave you? How could you be separated from her? When he said this, Ishwar opens his eyes. He comes, but let's hear what he says. Oh friend, who are you? Lord Shiva cannot even recognize Lord Vishnu. When somebody dies and you go to a funeral and you see people lose consciousness and you see them in such a position, who are you? What has happened? Why are all of you here? And they get cor confused, corrupted. He's going through the same thing. Who are you? Who are all of you? Who is this Sati? Please tell to me, friend. When Lord Vishnu heard these words, tears come to his eyes. 
and these tears that have fall upon the body of Lord Shiva. Taking this water, these tears, they start to rub him. When people faint, then we just take out Kaladu and rub them down. This friend is taking the tears to see his friend reach to this position. When Shiva sees Vishnu crying, he starts to cry. And the two of them create something called the Bhavana Bhavana Tirat that still exists by a mountain in India. When people go there, if you are losing your spouse due to sickness and harm, that person, that anniversary is extended, that marriage is extended. Lord Vishnu bathed his friend with tears and he says, Oh, ocean of knowledge, you know everything. How, how are you so afflicted by grief? Good days and bad days, they will come and go. But you stand firm through it. And what brings that good and bad? Past deeds, Prabhu. Past deeds bring that bad and that good to a person. Let's hear what he says. He says when people do different type of negative they come to a point where they have to reap what they sow. Lord Shiva is looking at him. And this is a question that plagued many Hindus. If God is God, how could he allow his wife? Go, go to the Yagna, go. You want to go, go. You're asking me to go, go ahead. How could he allow her to go, knowing that it would bring about her destruction? This Lord Shiva is always placed in this position. You remember the story where he decapitates Ganesh Baba? Many people ask, if he is God, he didn't know that little boy was his son. If he knows the inner workings of you and I, he didn't know that that was innocence in work. Why would he destroy a child? What type of example is that? In Shivran, Narad Muni asks, Prabhu, why? Did Shiva allow Sati to go through this separation? Let's hear what happened. Narad Muni asked Prabhu, Guruji, please tell me how it is possible for this mistake to happen. If Lord Shiva loves his Sati Mata so much, if we are hearing how he is like a normal person bewildered by the loss of the wife, how did he allow her to go in such a place in the first instance? And he says, it happened when they were roaming from place to place, Sati and Shiva in better times, long before the Yagna, that whilst they were passing in a particular area, forested area, they had come across Sri Ram. Lakshman in the forest, Sri Ram is crying, bewildered, confused. But what was more confusing, it was as if these two people are mere humans, first of all. But then Lord Shiva goes and does something very strange. He bows to this bewildered person. Paying homage to him in that forest, Sri Ram lifts his hands and bless Mahadev Baba. Sati Devi is watching all of this. And she is confused. She says uh, uh, as they move away and they are, they are alone again. Swami, you are worshipped by all the devotees. Brahma, Vishnu, they came when the lingam was formed. And they bowed to you. How is it now you are bowing to this man that is so helpless? Look, he's lost his wife. How is it possible that you are paying homage to him? Who is he? She says, he says to her, that is the incarnation of my Lord Sri Hari Vishnu. He's upon the earth and he's playing the Leela to rid the earth of that person we talked about last night, Dashanan. When Madhav had given him the name Rawan because of the screaming and the crying, Rawan means the one who cries very loudly. He says, my Lord is coming now to rid the earth of the scourge. So when I saw him, I had to pay homage. Satimata in her mind,
couldn't understand that the whole Jagat Nath, Jagannath is fitting inside this human shell. That is lost wife, that is crying, roaming forest, displaced from palace, no gem, no jewel, no crown on his head. This is that same Vishnu. I cannot believe that. And she waits again and she says, Mari Baba, I cannot believe that person is Sri Vishnu. By the Maya of Lord Shiva, O Narad, she did not know who he was. And Lord Shiva says to her, Devi, if you want, if you doubt me, go, go and test him. You go and put him to the test for yourself and please your mind. I'll wait here for you. So he sits on a banyan tree and Mario Baba lies down and he's waiting for Devi to return. Mother is thinking, how will I test him? How will I know if it is true he is that Sri Hari Vishnu? You know what I'll do? I'll take the form of his wife. I will look as if I am Sita Mata. And let me see if he will see me or he will see his wife. She takes the form of Sita Mata. And as she walks up to Sri Ram without flinching, without a second thought, Sri Ram says, Oh Satima, I bow to you. Lovingly tell me where is Shiva? Where has Rudra gone? And why have you come in the forest alone in this guise, in this look? In this form, I saw him passing, mother. Where is my friend today? Where has he gone? And mother was shocked that in this form, he was able to see who she really was. And she says, I now know who you really are. And she leaves him, but she cannot, she cannot, she feels ashamed to go and tell Lord Shiva that she is sorry. That she made a mistake and she doubted her husband. But there's a problem. As that doubt is still playing in her mind, she cannot understand how is it that Lord Vishnu is coming upon the earth. Why is he here as a Hindu? Think about all the forms we have. Agni, Vayu, Hanuman, different forms. How come all the major characters are only incarnations of Lord Vishnu? He's always the main role. And Lord Shiva is always on his side, supporting. When Ram is there, Lord Shiva incarnates as Hanuman. And she starts to think now, how come he comes as Ram? Why Ram? And when she went back, she said to Lord Shiva, she says, I went and I tested him and he did pass. But could you tell to me why he is the one who is always going upon the earth to remove evil? Let's hear what Lord Shiva talks about. For everybody's benefit, please listen. At one point, a great throne was created. Lord Shiva, just as that night when he was feeding Lord Vishnu, he wants to worship Lord Vishnu in Vaikun. After Ganesh is revived, when the head is placed upon the body and he caught back his son, Devi Mata is calm. He wants to worship Lord Vishnu for naming Ganesh, Ganapati, the leader of all the Ganas. Places him on this Singhasan, Lion's Throne. With that powerful seat, he placed a, a crown upon his head and he started to bathe him with milk and dahi and gobar, cow mutra, or the urine from the cow. Ghee is bathed upon his head. The five things that come from the cow, Panchavagya, these things purify. For this reason, when different type of prayer, when you go to wedding and you see them bathing the Dolahan, the Dolahin on the Sunday morning, they say traditional Sunday morning, with the milk and the dahi, this is reminiscent of this. 
we shortcut, we put milk under here, but it have three other things we are supposed to bathe them in. Remove any type of unclean, remove any type of negativity. He does this for Lord Vishnu and he says, from today, O Vishnu, you will be the destroyer of all evil people. I appoint you to be the preserver of this universe. You go upon the earth and you take form after form, incarnation after incarnation. Whenever Mother Earth calls upon you, you go in one form or the other. Whether it is the fish, the mustya, the kurma or the tortoise, the varaha, the nursing, Ram, Krishna, you go and you serve Mother Earth. Reduce all that is evil to ashes. Those that plague the earth with trouble, you go. And when people attack the heavens, I will be there to help you. Let's hear what he says in this book. Lord Vishnu, listening to the words of Shiva, decided to listen and every time he took incarnation, Lord Shiva would take form to go and visit him, to go and check in on him, to see if he was being successful in his task, in his job. No different is this moment when Sri Ram is upon the earth. Lakshman is the incarnation of Sheshnag and they are walking. This is why Shiv Baba had to bow to him. He wants to pay homage to the person he sent. When devotees, when Krishna is there and Krishna is about to go back and he is bleeding profusely under the peepal tree, even then Shiva comes to say, Prabhu, I thank you for your seva of saving Prithvima, but it's now time for you to go back. For this reason, when Lord Shiva was getting married and the worship of that form Sati, not Parvati, Sati was being done, Lord Shiva makes a promise that if a person hurts, harm, or in any way discredit the form or the name Ram, then I'm going to give up that person. I am going to pull away from that person. I am not going to protect that person. If you want to know me, worship Ram, he says, in the happiness of the merriment of his wedding, he embraces Lord Vishnu and he says, if a person does not worship you, then they will never know me. Go to any Shiv Puran Yagya and on the Thursday you will hear Rameshwar Puja. This is why. I'm saying it tonight because tomorrow we are going to do Rameshwar Puja. Tomorrow, each and every one of you have the opportunity to worship Ram, to worship Shiva, Rameshwar, the two of them standing together. And he says, when one, if you feel you can do it out Ram, but you want me, not in dream, you will see me. Oh Lord Vishnu, today as friends, I bind myself to you that no one could come between me and you. So great is our friendship. When Sati Devi heard this, immediately she knew she was in trouble. In the mind of Lord, Vish Lord Shiva, he had already contemplated. She had a doubt about Sri Ram. She even thought I was making a line to her about Sri Ram. Sati Mata is in trouble. Let's hear what he's saying to himself. The vow is... I will remain loyal, I will protect, I will serve anybody that protects the name, practice the name, sings the name of Sri Ram. But if a person breaks that name, I will break that relationship with that person. He says, what will I do? My vow, my breath is in jeopardy now. Do I choose my wife? Or do I choose my vow? Do I keep to my word? Or do I give up my wife? Madhya Baba makes the decision that when a person makes a mistake, when a person has done something, they are going to reap the reward of that. I am not going to go down that road. I will hold to my vow. And he holds to his vow. The Akashvani says, Oh Prabhu, Har Har Mahade, great are you, O Yogi, that even when it was to choose between righteousness or the Maya of wife, you stayed stable 
and you took that hard decision that there is no one oh the true yogi the true exemplar there is no one on par with you mentally he makes the decision it is time to start to distance pull away from Sati Devi from that moment he started to spend time with her giving her religious and holy discourses but the relationship was different and it continued like that up until the moment where she went to the yagna and she gets destroyed prem sabalo mahapati mahadeva ki jai no no she's dead going back to brahmvai vatpuran and he's remembering how she had doubted sri ram and now she's gone this is why devotees this form had to undergo the separation of lord shiva lord vishnu is holding him and rubbing his face trying to revive him lord vishnu says listen good days and bad days come because of past deeds sati devi had some past deeds that she was now reaping he says actions are successful a person gains success because of the prayers the tapasya the jap that they do one will get good and bad reward because of the actions that they do that tapasya will come because of the nature that they have a person will pray or choose not to pray depending on the mindset that they have the relationship they have with god is because of the mindset that they have how two people could sit by that baby and say prayers one is praying god bless me help me allow me to see better men thank you for the opportunity to pray and the next person is saying dear god i said upon it yeah next see that dear god look that lady put two dollars in the rt dear god yes see the sari she have on you're sitting by the baby arguably i am doing prayers but your mind is somewhere else he says the nature of a person is as a result of constant practice that practice could only come when a person has friendship a noble company of good people when you surround yourself tonight please listen to this especially children pandit from st helena the other night was talking about keeping our children from the madhushala and the rum shops what type of parent are you are you the type to say babe take one shot of punch no problem a good for the worms and when the child start to take plenty for the worms baba my child is drink too much or will you encourage your children to do better better than you upward movement look at the friends they keep in the school look at the type of extra curricular and co curricular activity long ago in my time when we went to school and you came out with a levels gurji that was enough you could have got a job gurji now is lecturing in university and children are coming out with university certificates so much that lawyers are driving taxis in trinidad now they can't get jobs how many doctors cannot get a job in a hospital that have no doctors don't know the maths in that one but your children now are looked at at a different level now they when they sign up for masters program write a letter explaining why you should be chosen so many people are doing it we have to select now from this group one or two people so your extra curricular and your co curricular do you play sports why would that be important why would be why would sports be important i have to learn how to play with good sportsmanship and good sportsman like behavior i have to learn sometime i will lose we teach children a a a a a and the day against c kill yourself who says good boy good girl do you know within our circle what we do when sea results come out you hear the password you hear that one password hmm. they got to bribe to get out that child out of that school instead the parents should know the friends they keep it is not the school you know is the child if the parents are vigilant 
the, the teacher has to pay attention. But nowadays, how many parents make time? Teacher, I want to come and see you. Teacher, I want to know what's going on in school. Instead, I have the dean here with me tonight. He says it as if it is a drop-off service. You take your trouble, and when 8 o'clock comes, you come and drop the trouble for the teacher. And when 4 o'clock comes, you come and pick up back your trouble. That is the attitude of many parents. That is the reality we live in. And when you have monsters now shooting and killing and robbing and all these things, that is them. That is them people. Why not we people? Not we. We don't do them kind of thing. He says we are constantly having friendship with noble people. What does our text say? Encourage your children. Encourage yourself. Encourage the people you would strain yourself, stretch yourself. Have people that are better than you around you. If I surround myself with people that when I am with them, I am learning something, then I will grow. But when you have an ego that is bigger than the mountain, and I want to show you, I can do it. I have conversations every day with people. Every day, upon the day, I'm sure. Yeah, let's get this. Some people, and I hope nobody here is like that. Some people. Pondit, you know, I just fast on every Monday and I fast without water and I offer the dar. And when I lift the dar, I just stretch my hands. So, okay. All right. Good. Wait, what, what? Tell me what to say. All right. Very good. God is the judge, not Pondit. What you do in your prayer, for example, this is just one part of your life. What you do in your prayer that between you and your God. You rather than boast about what you know, think about how much you don't know. Think about what else you could do with this life God gave you. Every day you hear people fall ill, cancer. We were talking about that today. Cancer, heart problems. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. When you listen to Satnarayan Bratkatha and he really said in this age people life will get so short. You do go looking for trouble and trouble is come looking for you. The time you take to think about what you know, take my advice. It have plenty, you know. And you try and learn by accompanying yourself, surrounding yourself with people that know more. So what happens when you surround yourself with people like this? First thing you do, you learn to Mm. you talk less because I want to hear when you sit at the feet of people like Guruji pundits like Sunil and Pandadev tonight and they are expounding teaching you when you have the right teacher in the school system who has the right earnest attitude to invest it into your child when you are wrong somebody like that you don't have time to talk you just want to get what you could get from this person and learn and allow this person to change who you are. This is what you call a guru. By mere contact, by in the presence, what this person does not think about as a lesson will be a life lesson for the individual. It is left to you to pick up what you could from this noble company. Don't wait for somebody to package it and put it perfect for you to understand everything that falls from the lips of the guru or the person who is teaching you you have to know how to utilize it quickly brain start to work so that I could learn from the good company that I am keeping but if the company you are keeping is dragging you down there is no person more pitiful than you because you are now in a downward spiral and there is nobody to help you from you when you choose that type of life and that type of company, how do you tell yourself, all right, you know what, I have to do better today. When the friends say drink, you drink. When they say lime, you lime. And when you have no money, you will see no friends. Prem Subhulu Mahapati Mahadeva Ki Jai. He says these different qualities that a person develops comes because of your blessing, O oh Baba. Why are you like this? Oh Rudra, we are one. Our friendship is so powerful and so great. 
how can I live to see you like this? He says, you know what I think you should do, Shiv Baba? Go and pray to mother. Every time you get in trouble, for the husbands here, you know when you do something wrong, and God bless you, I have a partner, I have a partner, Shiva Prasad. When I'm in trouble, that is my go-to person. And you say, well, boy, you know you're wrong. Somehow, I am always wrong. His friend says, go and beg forgiveness of your wife. Humble yourself. And you did it before, do it again. When did he do it before? You know the story where, according to Shiv Puran, Lord Shiva throws the trishul and he cuts the head of Ganesh Baba. Parvati Mata, in that instant, Devi Mata did not like that. It had two, three instances like this. But using this as an example, let me just talk about how he does it. He says, do you remember when your sin, that day when you cut that child's head, do you remember what caused that? Lord Shiva is looking like a child listening to his mother. He's just lapping up every word that is coming from the lips of Lord Vishnu. Before Ganesh was born, I am quoting from Brahma Vat Brahm, Krishna Janam Khan, chapter 43. There was a war between Sumali and Mali. These two brothers against the gods. Lord Shiva was leading the fight. And there was, at the climax of the battle, they were spinning, shooting arrows at each other. Lord Shiva sees Sumali in the distance and he drives the Trishul, ready to let loose. And as he let go the Trishul, Surya Narang Swami passed in the middle as he was running behind somebody else in the battlefield. But in the chest of Surya Narang, the Trishul landed and let him be lifeless now lying on the ground. The father of Surya, Kashyap Muni, comes and says, Oh Shiva, what have you done? What did my child do to incur this pain? Today I put a strap on you, this Trishul, from your own hand. Just as you killed my son, you will kill your own son. How you do, you so you reap, right? Lord Shiva is quiet, motionless. I didn't mean to do that. That was not my intention. Kashyap Muni is a son of Brahma. He has a lot of power. He brings back his son to life. Surya Narang Swami says, But daddy, he didn't aim for me, you know. That wasn't this man's intention. Why you say that? Surya Narang Swami says, Well, what he says will come to pass. But when your son falls, I bless you. Just as oh, I am revived and I am back up, that child will get back up. Principal Umapati Mahadeva Ki Jai. That is why that had to happen. And that is why it happened in that way. Lord Shiva, listening to all that Lord Vishnu had to say, he took it as a, as, a, as a reminder. You know, sometimes when you go to funeral and you see people really, really cast into the depths of bewilderment now that the person is gone. Sometimes you don't know the words. And you have to be very careful. I go to the hospital fairly regular to pray with people and I see the worst Indian people, Hindu people, my Lord. For example, let me use myself. You know, see me after a little while upon the day. Baba, you real get fat boy. We. <laughs> and my first answer, I didn't know. Because apparently that we have to say, right? So that funny. Hear this one now. Somebody on their last breath. They lie down on the bed. And they go in. And God send you to bring a little inspiration. A little bit. A little hope. So you're going in the hospital, right? That way you went for. To bring help. But you're walking in the room. Watch the person on the bed and say, Oh God, look how you come. Mm. Now you got dead. <laughs> if they had an inch of life left, that was it. They're gone. Your words have value. You are the Lord Vishnu sometimes in this Leela that is being enacted here. Your words have value. When people lose somebody, what do we do? Go and help them. Where we just carry bread, cheese, butter, a helping hand. 
how could I help all you today? All you lost somebody, let me help you. That is the mode you have to click into when people have trouble. Then you're doing your part. When you break somebody's will, when you destroy them, when you hurt them, you're doing good and will never yield good. He reminds his friend, go and sit down and pray. And he started to pray. Bota, you are the one who was supposed to make me a parent. You took this form to become my consort. The deltas are begging for a child. When you leave me, how will that, how will that Leela play? Mother, you are the other half of my being and my body. Without you, how will we complete our act? How will they see us? How will I become a father? His mother, forgive me. Every time I do something wrong, you get angry, ma. And you forgive me one day, one day, somehow, some way. You always shanty, mother. Mother, I'm begging you, mother, come back to me. What last time we heard them when they were talking about the Annapurna form? That the Purusha, the male form of energy, and the Prakriti, the female form of energy, they were arguing which one was more powerful. Tonight he says, I concede, I concede that the Purusha, that male energy, he's to the front. But without the Devi, without the Shakti, he's helpless. When Vishnu wanted to come upon the earth as Krishna, he had to get the power of Devi with him. He says, when you take form as the seventh child of Devaki and Vasudev, I will, pro I will propagate your worship in the form of Durga upon the earth. When she jumps up in the sky and she tells Kans, Oh Kans, you fool! Vishnu is already born in Gokul. Mother, living proof that I cannot work without you. Mother, forgive this fool. You were always there, Ma. Protect me now. Protect me now, Ma. And please, come take form and guide me. When will you come back? With the bellowing of a sunk, Madhavi Baba opened his eyes and standing in front of him was a huge form of the goddess. In her raw energy, standing before him, clad in a white sari, Devi says, O oh Ishwar, why are you sobbing? Why this display of these type of out of control emotions? Why are you so lost? Could I leave you? He holds on to the mala of bones and he says, This is why I am lost. He says, You pervade over my body. This is why I am bewildered because you have gone, Sati. Without you, I have lost my compass. I have lost my sense of direction. I have lost you and I have lost everything. She says, Oh Mahadev, have patience. Whatever has happened, has happened by the will of the universe. Oh Ishwar, know that I will be born in the form of Parvati from the womb of Meena and Himachal. I am coming from that Himalayan mountain and I again will be your wife and we will have that family life that you are talking about. In this way, O oh husband, free yourself from the flames of this separation. Free yourself and prepare, O oh Mahadev, for my return. Prem Subhalo Mahapati Mahadeva Ki Devi Mata disappeared and with that consolation Mahadeva Baba went back to Kailash and continued in his dhyan waiting for the day for Parvati Mata to take birth Prem Subhalo Adi Shakti Mata Ki Jai In tonight's Leela very simple you saw an expression of karma it is an explanation that gives to you some closure as to why certain things are the way they are in his story. In it, why does he look the way when we were talking about the bones and the ashes? Why does Sati have to leave him? The rationale we touched on, why did he end up decapitating Ganesh Baba's head? There are many things about our Lord Shiva as we go night after night you will learn.